Hello, my name is Sarah Booter and I will be speaking to you about R. V. Green, a case affirming Aboriginal hunting rights that provides useful insight into the nature of the relationship between Aboriginal peoples and the Canadian legal system. In October 2018, Albert Green and Blair Hill were hunting in Moose Mountain Provincial Park in Saskatchewan. They are both members of the Six Nations First Nation in Ontario and were hunting for the purpose of food. However, they were accused of unlawful hunting by the provincial government. The case is therefore related to Canada's history of colonialism and the restraints of the Indian Act and serves as an example of, of the provincial government undermining Aboriginal treaty rights to hunt. The province argued that in the province of Saskatchewan, only Aboriginal peoples who were protected under Saskatchewan treaties could hunt. These included treaties number 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10, as circled in the image. The province stated that they wanted to protect game and resources for Saskatchewan locals, and were concerned that leniency in this case would leave an insufficient amount of game for others. Therefore, for any Indigenous peoples outside of Saskatchewan who were not protected under the previously mentioned treaties, a license was required to hunt on Crown land. Ultimately, the decision made by Justice John D. Kovach, a Saskatchewan Provincial Court judge, in 2019 affirmed Aboriginal hunting rights. However, the provincial government initially stated that they planned on appealing the decision, which threatened the victory for Indigenous communities. This will be discussed later in my presentation. The Saskatchewan Natural Resources Transfer Agreement, or NRTA, is a federal document signed in 1930 regarding the use of Crown land and the natural resources on those lands. Specifically, paragraph 12 states that in order to secure to the Indians of the province the continuance of the supply of game and fish for their support and subsistence, Canada agrees that the laws respecting game in force in the province from time to time shall apply to the Indians within the boundaries thereof, provided, however, that the said Indians shall have the right, which the province hereby assures to them, of hunting, trapping, and fishing game, and fish for food at all seasons of the year, on all unoccupied crown lands, and on any other lands to which the said Indians may have a right of access. The Crown argued that the NRTA only applied to Aboriginal peoples in Saskatchewan with an existing treaty right to hunt. However, Justice Kovach took a broader view and decided that any Aboriginal person in Canada protected under any treaty has the right to hunt on unoccupied Crown land in Saskatchewan, per the NRTA. Justice Kovach cited R.V. Sutherland, a 1980 case where the court upheld that the Manitoba Natural Resources Agreement was a constitutional document. In the Manitoba document, Paragraph 13 is the equivalent to Saskatchewan's Paragraph 12. Provincial legislation cannot alter the rights set out in these natural resource transfer agreements. So the issue in this case was whether the men accused of unlawful hunting were in fact hunting for the purpose of food, which is permitted under the NRTA. In Canada, existing Aboriginal treaty rights are affirmed and protected under Section 35 of the Constitution Act 1982. However, the courts are given a lot of discretion in interpreting these rights. Their role is therefore essential in building the relationship between Aboriginal peoples and the Canadian legal system. Precedent, including R.V. Sutherland, indicates that a broad rather than narrow interpretation of legislation is required to move forwards in the goal of reconciliation. Any ambiguities that arise should be resolved in favor of Aboriginal peoples. If this does not occur, the process of reconciliation is hindered. As shown in the bottom picture, Aboriginal peoples fight to honor the treaties because treaty rights are human rights. It is important that infringements on the rights of Aboriginal peoples be understood in order to prevent further injustices. R.V. Green is an example of an instance where an injustice occurred by accusing these men of unlawful hunting and questioning their treaty rights, but a further injustice was prevented by the decision of Justice Kovach. 
The Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations, EFSIN, formerly the Federation of Saskatchewan Indian Nations, is an organization that represents 74 Saskatchewan First Nations. Their goal is to honor and protect the treaties, and their chief is Bobby Cameron, shown in the image on the slide to the right of EFSIN's logo. Following the decision in RV Green, Cameron noted that Aboriginal peoples and treaties are not bound by provincial borders. He acknowledged that the decision was a vindication of Aboriginal treaty rights. It can therefore be viewed as a step forward in the fight for expanding hunting rights. I will now talk about Aboriginal hunting and fishing seasons. Aboriginal hunting and fishing rights have been refined by the courts as well as clarified by the courts given the discretion they have. The United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples states in Article 26 that Indigenous peoples have the right to the lands, territories, and resources which they have traditionally owned, occupied, or otherwise used or acquired. Hunting is also of extreme importance to Indigenous communities. First, this use of land is central to their diverse cultures, practices, and traditions. It is also a major source of food. Although the discussion about hunting and fishing seasons does bring up the issue of availability of resources and competition for game for locals in Saskatchewan, Justice Kovach ruled that this was not a problem in RV Green. I mentioned in the overview of RV Green that the provincial government initially stated that it planned to appeal the decision made by the Saskatchewan Provincial Court. However, to this date, no further comments have been made about this potential appeal. This reveals the difference of opinion on the application of the NRTA between the provincial government and Justice Kovach, who sided with the Indigenous communities. However, the fact that an appeal was threatened shows that the legacy of colonialism in Canada is still prevalent. Aboriginal rights were disrespected in this sense which needs to be prevented in order to promote reconciliation. Ultimately, RV Green is not an isolated incident. In 2015, Christian Puron was accused of unlawful hunting in Saskatchewan and appeared before the province's Court of Appeal. Though he was initially acquitted, the decision was overturned and Puron was convicted. Later, the conviction was overturned. In 2010, an American Indigenous man named Richard Desaltel was charged with unlawful hunting in Canada. Having argued that he was following in the footsteps of his ancestors, Desaltel's rights were upheld. The connection between these two cases and R.V. Green demonstrates the colonial pattern of undermining treaty rights in Canada. Continuing to uphold these treaty rights in question is crucial to discouraging further unwarranted charges and using the law as a positive force for Aboriginal peoples. Throughout this course, we have studied the work of Professor John Boros from the University of Victoria's Faculty of Law. Professor Boros has frequently mentioned the principle of Mino Bimbadiswin, meaning to try to live well in the world. In order for this to come to fruition, the colonial pattern of undermining treaty rights must stop. To do this, courts should continue to affirm Aboriginal treaty rights. We have also learned about Ovid Malkhadi in his interview on Aboriginal rights and reconciliation. Malkhadi states that reconciliation requires making both amends and tough decisions. These include sharing wealth and increasing reserve sizes. However, it also includes affirming Aboriginal hunting rights and ceasing to threaten them in the courts. Ultimately, R.V. Green and other cases discussed reveal that there is more work to be done to strengthen the relationship between Indigenous peoples and the Canadian legal system. There are larger, more important issues at hand that need to be focused on to continue on the path of reconciliation. Thank you for your attention. Here are the sources I consulted for my presentation.